Okay, today we're going to do a seasonal event. It's the beginner non-race car challenge with the Colt at 450 pp and that's actually the car you win for getting gold on this one. Hey everybody, Uncle Guy here. If you enjoy this video, please give it a like and a share. You can add any comments below and if you haven't done it already, please hit that subscribe button and notification bell. That way you won't miss any of the new stuff. All right, here we go. All right, we're gonna do the beginner non-race car challenge at the Cape Ring again, 450 PP in the Colt, which is the car you win for getting gold in this event. Over and take a look at the track settings, manual transmission, driving line on, uh, traction control off on this one, and ABS on, looks like three. Car settings, we're with sports hard. Uh, suspension, fully adjustable suspension, ride height at 90. I fitted the racing brakes. Spring rate is five and three and a quarter. Dampers and anti roll are all at four. Two and a half, one and a half toe, and no cam er, camber and no toe in. Fully adjustable tranny, set it to 124. Standard drive line, triple plate uh, clutch. Power at 97.7%. Stage 3 engine mods, pretty much all the engine mods except we went to the mid range turbo for this one to get us uh, where we need to be. And then full weight loss on the body, we didn't add any ballast weight, uh, move any of that around. Puts us right at 450 pp. You can see the horsepower torque, weight shift. It's a front wheel drive car. Set up real similar to how I won't set most of them up, but. Uh, See how it handles here. You can see I've got the brake calipers painted yellow. I put the racing brakes, I just like to paint the calipers. I didn't do any arrow on this one. And we shouldn't need it. Um, by the time I got to here, I know this track a little better. So I actually, I don't know if any of you saw the video I did with this on the 66 GT40 that we won it with. Uh, actually run a little faster in this car. There's my classic wide first turn because I got cold tires. Still got to learn to uh, tone that down. This is a really good handling car the way it's set up. Uh, easy to drive with no traction control though you can spin the front tires a little bit coming out if you're not a little easy on the gas. If that becomes a problem just click in one or two uh, clicks of traction control in your driver settings. Up the hill here, we get into fifth gear. Um, doesn't feel as fast as the GT40 did, but it actually uh, it goes a little faster when it's all said and done. Real good through this corner here, handles real neutral. A lot of times the front wheel drive cars get a little plowy, especially when you get a little more power in them. Um, this one seems to be handled pretty good. Again, the AI is kind of easier to pass on the outside when they're hugging these turns. If you try to go inside them, they will usually cut you off. As you get into the first jump here, we get a little bit of air. It's kind of cool. When we drop down here, we're going to get down into third gear. Coming up through the other cars a little bit. Up by him pretty good. And we'll go ahead and take this guy around the outside. Third gear here, you come up, should be able to get into fourth here. That corner is a lot faster if you don't cut that curb there, if you go just outside of it. And then this is just a great big arcing corner, kind of with three apexes in it. And this first lap came in 152, not too bad. First lap's always going to be a second or two slower because you're not up to speed the start finish line. Come up here on the Camaro. Run him pretty good. Tight turn here, you're going to go all the way down to second gear. And I ran it a little bit wide, but not too bad. Up through fourth here, and then we should be able to get into fifth gear just as we get through here. There we go.
definitely starting to learn this track a little more, a little, a little easier to drive. Here I'll get him on the inside, which once you're in the corner, they try to hug that line pretty good, so you're going to want to look to the outside oftentimes on those. Through here and back up to the jump. We're already in third place on lap two. That's pretty, pretty strong. Um, seem to be able to catch them right about the end of the third lap. Uh, most times I've run this. We go down to third and then down to second, make this corner and then back up on the gas. And again, this is a section you can make up some pretty good time if you're smooth. Just missed the curb there, and then it's kind of a three apex corner here. Just round arc. Your hand doesn't even want to be moving on the steering wheel. Just get, it, get in that right arc, and it'll put up a pretty good time for you. So there we got down to 151.1. So a little bit better times. It's amazing to me how much faster the front runners are than the, the rear guys. A lot of times they're you know, go up the front couple will be half a lap ahead of the back markers. Got in there a little heavy, but made the pass for second. Nice left-hander here. Should be able to get him right before this corner. There we go. So we're in first place at the first part of lap three, so we should be able to put a put a pretty good lead on him by the end of the race. I didn't think this car was going to drive this good. It actually uh, is faster than a lot of things you would expect out of a Colt 1.5. But it's actually kind of a fun little car. Down into here, we're going to get down into stay in fourth there, and then we're going to come down go to the left here, and then we're going to bring it down to second gear, make our corner here, and then we're driving out again to the right hander, and then the big sweeping left. So, between this corner and the carousel, there's a couple places that if you can be really smooth, you can actually hold pretty good speed through there. See what this lap comes out. 151 again. Pretty consistent lap times. Which is what you're striving to do. See if we can put a nice clean one down here and get under that 150 mark maybe. Get that turn wide again. There's there's still a few areas of this track that I don't have quite figured out, but good enough to win this anyway. Again, these seasonal events are are really good for learning a particular track, and they pay a fortune. Uh, by the fifth day that you've signed up in a row or logged in, you get uh, you're up to 200% of the payout, so you can get millions quickly. A, a lot of guys. They've said they have trouble finding the, uh, a way to get you know, their cash up. And the seasonal events are definitely a good way. Now, on the hot lap events, you can only win those prizes once. But on these, it pays you every time. So, you know, if you're trying to get some money up, win it in a car and then go build a different car and run it again and see how many different cars you can build. And you'll, you'll end up with kind of a sleeve of cars that are built for 450p that you like the way they handle, you know the way they handle. Um, I've got a, a lot of cars in my in my uh, arsenal that are set up for 500 PP. I've got some that are set up for 600 PP. I've got some that are for 450. Uh, so it makes it easier when you want to go to a different car if you've got a, a bunch of them that are kind of set up the way you like them. It just saves some time. All right, looks like we're coming in here pretty good. Final lap of, uh, got into the 150, so that's pretty good. Well, that's it, gang. If you enjoyed this, uh, I'll try to bring you some more. And other than that, we'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.